Superintendent Darren Filkey, officer in charge of traffic services branch with SAPOL. Unfortunately, I have to stand up here again today and talk to you about three really unfortunate road crashes that have happened in South Australia in the last 48 hours as our horror road toll and our lives lost, and our serious injury numbers continue to climb. These crashes demonstrate the devastating impact that lives lost and serious injuries have on members of our community, families, friends, and everybody associated uh, with the uh, people who've lost their lives in the last 48 hours, and how that just um, causes no end of sadness um, across the community. And I'm here to talk today about, we need to make this stop. We need people to actually stop taking risks on the road. We need people to wake up we needed the number to stop rising. It can't continue. If I just go and give you some data on um, the crashes that have happened in the last uh, 48 hours. As you would know this morning, there was a crash at, uh, at Chain of Ponds uh, at about 9.25 a.m. this morning. Uh, police were called uh, to South Para Road where a car had left the road and collided with a tree. The car had four occupants. Sadly, one of those persons has uh, lost their lives and three others uh, are fighting for their life currently in, in hospital. Major crash attended the scene of that particular accident and it's very early on in the investigation, so we are still trying to determine exactly what the cause of that particular crash was. You would also know that last night down at Norlunga Downs at around 9.40 p.m., there was a motorcyclist collided with a vehicle uh, on Barcelona Road at Norlunga. Sadly, that motorcycle rider lost his life at that particular collision um, and died at the scene. Um, again, major crash are investigating that particular incident um, and some more details will come uh, in due course as to what the exact cause of that particular uh, crash was. And yesterday, you would know, uh, in the afternoon, uh, sorry, uh, yesterday morning in, in Port Piri, uh, Port Piri police were called to Abertai Road um, the reports of a collision between a vehicle uh, and a cyclist. Again, sadly, a 72-year-old local Risden Park man died at the scene. Um, and for the third time, Major Crash have had to attend the scene, are still working through uh, circumstances surrounding that crash. And again, we'll be able to provide some more details um, once the cause of that collision is actually known. This year, we've seen a rise in collisions occurring um, as a result of speeding, as a result of dangerous road use, and as a result of distraction. All of these factors, combined with not wearing your seatbelt, combined with drink and drug driving, are the main causes of road trauma in South Australia. No different this year, but those three aspects are the things that uh, we are seeing as police that are causing most of the carnage on our road this year. We also know that this year that there is a high number of motorcyclists that have lost their lives. It is um, an overrepresentation in the numbers. 18 motorcyclists have lost their lives this year uh, compared to 13 uh, last year. Um, it's not an acceptable number. Uh, we want uh, motorcyclists um, and all other road users uh, to be able to use the road safely. Um, they should be able to go for a ride on their motorbike and they should be able to get home safely. Um, why, does, why motorcyclists? Well, is, is probably what you're going to ask. Um, the mere fact that motorcyclists uh, can, be, can be difficult to see, they don't have the same protection as uh, people who uh, uh, commute in, vehicle, in, in cars and in other vehicles. Um, unfortunately, some motorcycle riders will take unnecessary risks um, whilst riding their motorcycle. And these are the things that are, are leading to the motorcyclists leaving their lives this year. What we're also seeing this year is other vulnerable road users being overrepresented in uh, the lives lost and the serious injuries. Compared to last year, um, seven cyclists have lost their life compared to two for the whole of last year. We're not even at the end of this year. Pedestrians continue to be represented in the serious injury numbers. So we have seen a trend in vulnerable road users uh, attributing to some of the numbers 
to do with, with collisions and, and serious injuries and lives lost on our roads. The other thing we're seeing is that some of our most experienced road users, those road users uh, who are aged between 40 and 70 in that group, now there's, that's, a, that's a fair span of age group, and there's some breakdown within those age groups clearly, but that age group where we would say are some of our most experienced road users um, are contributing significant numbers to our lives lost and to our serious injuries this year. It's not the domain of older road users. It's not the domain of younger road users. Some of our most experienced road users are the ones that are taking risks and making mistakes. So all road users, whatever age, no matter what your level of experience, no, long, no matter how long you've been driving, no matter how good a driver you think you are, you need to drive to the conditions. You should not speed. You should not engage, engage in dangerous driver behaviour. You should wear your seatbelt. Don't drink and drive. If you do, if you heed all of that, if you don't do any of those things, the chances of you not being killed on our roads is pretty good. You won't, it won't happen to you. You need to heed the messages. You need to understand. People need to have a conversation with members of their family, their friends, their associates, about how we use the road in this state. We cannot continue to see the number heading north like it is. It's unacceptable. What we also see is a number that's disproportionate in the rural environment as opposed to the metropolitan environment. We know that around about 57% of all lives lost this year uh, in the rural area and about 43 in the metropolitan area. Again, there's a level of complacency that can come in in a rural environment by road users. We ask again, people who use a road in a rural environment, take extra precaution about your road use um, in, the, in those areas. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't speed. Don't be distracted. Don't engage in dangerous behaviour. I think it gets reported uh, quite regularly, uh, almost every day, unfortunately, um, what our lives lost and our serious injury numbers are. But we are at 93 as a result of the chain of ponds incident this morning, compared with 57 last year. Almost another third um, we've lost this year, and we've still got the best part of two and a half months to go for the year. 656 serious injuries this year, compared to 564 last year. These are the, the numbers that you don't see. These are the numbers of people who are going to hospital with life-changing injuries who may never, ever be the same again. These are the ones that get reported as a number, but these are the ones that also continue to affect their families and their communities and their lives change forever. So as horrendous and as sad as it is to lose people on, on our roads, it is also sad that so many people are being seriously injured in these collisions as well. Can I just say, the police are doing all we can, all we can to reduce this number. Enforcement and education can only go so far, and we're doing lots of it. We run a number of operations throughout the year, targeting all of those different fatal five causes of road trauma that I've just mentioned. And we'll continue to do that, and it will ramp up um, over the holiday period and through the summer. We're out there all the time. We're out there trying to change road user behaviour. We're out there trying to change attitudes of drivers. But the police can only do so much. It gets back to the individual road user, the individual driver, the individual rider, the individual cyclist, the individual pedestrian, to take responsibility for what they do, to make the right choice on the road. If they do that, there's a very good chance they won't lose their life. And there's a very good chance they won't suffer a serious injury. The community need to get behind each other on this. As I said earlier, people need to talk to each other about responsible road use. Parents need to talk to their kids about it. Friends need to talk to friends about it. It doesn't discriminate. You can be the best, you might think you're the best driver in South Australia. You make one mistake, you get distracted once, you can have devastating consequences. 
We understand there's good drivers in South Australia. We get that and we applaud those people who do the right thing on the roads. But we need those people to continue to do the right things and we need those people who take the take a risk. It won't adopt the won't happen to me attitude to change that attitude and we'll be able to impact the number. I'm happy to take any of your questions. Does it feel like the message isn't getting through? Yeah, it does. <laughs> and I think you can tell by my demeanour today that I, I'm, I'm sometimes a bit lost for words about it, to be honest. It's, it's not the first time that you've seen me um, talk about lives lost and serious injuries on our, on our roads. Um, and we, we run a number of operations over the long weekend where I speak about it. I've, I've stood down at a car yard where a car's been crushed as a result of um, dangerous road use behaviour and speeding, trying to get the message through. The number feels like it's not getting through. The police can do so much. People who use vehicles on the roads need to take responsibility. We accept that some people who are involved in a collision, it may not have been their fault, but it is somebody else's fault. It is another road user's fault. So, yeah, if I can be honest, it doesn't feel like the message is getting through, but it has to get through. It has to, people have to start to stop and think about it. We're heading for a number that we don't want to, we don't want to see. So let's see if we can put a stop to it now. In terms of the chain of ponds crash, you're yet to identify the, the people involved, the passengers and the driver? Uh, yes, look, it's, it's only very early on. Um, uh, as you can imagine, it wasn't a, um, a very nice scene up there this morning. So major crash is still working through. Ma I think we'll start that grab again, sorry. Yeah. Um, you just asked about the crash at, at Chain of Ponds this morning. Um, as you can imagine, it wasn't a um, very pleasant scene up there this morning. Um, and major crash, because there was multiple people in, involved in that particular crash, major crash are still very much working through uh, the cause, the who, um, what led up to it, um, in, and who's connected with, with the people in the vehicle. So it's way too early for me to sort of really be specific about that. Um, the police will provide um, information on that in due course and as soon as we can, but we just have to respect the investigation at the moment as we, as we work through that. We've got three people fighting for life in hospital. Unfortunately, as I said, we've lost one life. Um, and as soon as we can provide some more details, we will. And in terms of that, um, the three people seriously injured, one um, fatal, do we know if that was the driver, the passengers, who's who in that? No, I, 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 don't, I don't know now. I, clearly it's not given of the vehicle, but which, with our position the vehicle, I can't comment on. Just it says passenger and the media. Room. Oh, that's right. Are they related in any way? The occupants of the vehicle? Yeah. No, I, I don't know. No. Um, when was the last time the toll was this high at this time of the year? Uh, we'd have to go back. Um, over 10 years to see uh, a number like we've we've seen. I mean, we've had uh, last year we, uh, was a low number, fortunately, and we'd, we'd like to get back to that number. But it's been um, almost a decade since we've seen a number like this. Um, and if we keep going like this, we're, we're going to um, potentially have uh, some of the worst life loss number that we've seen for many, many years. Is the crash this morning the most distressing scene police have seen this year? Police have been to a lot of, a lot of collisions this year um, <laughs> by virtue of the numbers I've just told you about. All of these crash scenes are very confronting in, in their own ways. We've got people who lose their lives at these crash scenes. Clearly some are, um, are more high impact than others. Um, some are more complex than others because they may involve multiple vehicles um, and multiple people. But um, for those, and I understand uh, some people may have attended the, the crash scene this morning, um, you, you will see it was a pretty confronting, uh, pretty confronting scene for the police, and it should be a confronting scene uh, for people who ultimately might get to see what that scene looked like, to see what the consequences um, of a mistake, albeit we don't know exactly what's happened, but possibly a mistake can make um, on our roads and, and what that can cause. You mentioned the rise in uh, vulnerable road users uh, losing their lives on our, on our roads. 
um, especially in terms of cyclists losing their lives. Obviously, there's a level of personal responsibility, but do you think better infrastructure like bike lanes and such would also help in this regard? Oh, look, anything can help. I won't talk about infrastructure necessarily. I mean, Adelaide, is, as we know, it's a, it's a cycle city. We've got some great cycle ways. We've got some great bike lanes um, and ways that cyclists can commute um, in the metropolitan area. It's a, it's, a range, it's a range of factors. Infrastructure may be one thing, um, but really it's, it's down to, to driver-rider behaviour. It's down to driver-rider attitude and what attitude they take when they get behind the wheel, what choices they make when they get behind the wheel. Um, sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a range of factors. It's not, not always about infrastructure. How, um, how devastating would this be to family members that are connected to these people that have died? Oh, the unimaginable. I, I, think, um, I think most people in this room um, would probably know someone who's been affected by road trauma, whether that's been a life lost or, or a serious injury. Um, it goes without saying that the ripple effect on a life lost through through the family is, is profound. So uh, the people who are connected with those people involved in the, uh, the crash this morning, the people connected with the, uh, those who lost their lives in the last night in the motorcycle and, and in Port Pirie, are all going to feel the same. And it ripples further than that, it ripples into the community. It, um, has long-lasting effects for a lot of people. Do we know the make of the car at the crash this morning? Uh, no, I'm not aware of the make of the car. No, it was a smaller car, but yeah, I don't know the make of the car. And we've also heard that the car was apparently full of overseas workers. Those were apparently the four men. Can you tell us anything about that? No, as I said before, we, Major Crash is still working through that. Um, and while there's a current investigation going, I'm not going to speculate on um, who, who was in the car, ages, etc. Let's let this invest play out for a bit longer. Like I said, we've got three people fighting for their life in hospital and let's, let's um, let the investigation roll out. Let give those people every possibility to recover and try and get their lives back. Um, and then I'm sure we can provide, provide you some details down the track as soon as we know. There's only so much you can hope to change individuals' behaviour. How about something like okay, reducing um, speed limits, um, you know, maybe implementing a back blanket, you know, 40, 30 kilometre limit in local zones? Yes, I mean, we can look at a, a range of things. We spoke about infrastructure, we spoke about speed limits, and, and the topics like demerit points have come up before. There's, a, there's all of these things that can continually be looked at, but there's not, not one silver bullet solution to all of this. Um, you've got speed limits here in South Australia that, for intents and purposes, are uh, satisfactory and adequate to what our conditions are. Um, for what goes into posting signed speed limits, people need to drive at the speed limit. That's what we should start with. If, if there's a 50 km hour speed limit, then drive to the speed limit. Don't speed. Don't drive over the speed limit. The speed limit is, is probably right. Well, if um, it's not sinking in, then do tough penalties need to be enforced? As I, as I said before, I think enforcement and education can only go so so far in this. Not everybody will respond to a higher fine or a larger sanction. That will clearly that will um, have an impact on a on a percentage of people. But that again, that's that's not going to provide uh, the silver bullet solution to this. This is a this is a complete attitude change for people. Regardless of the speed limit, regardless of the fine regime, the sanction regime, they just need to change their attitudes about the way they use the road. They do that. We probably wouldn't be talking about these these other issues. We'll take care of itself. Behaviour, choice, attitude, no risk taking, no complacency. That's what we should be talking about. Last question. And the passenger that was killed in the crash this morning. Do we know where he was seated? No. No. Thank you.